at me. I want to come to that. This is so much fun. <laughs> So right now I'm doing one of the most emblematic things that you could do when you come to Venice and I'm going to record after this boat passes. So right now I am doing one of the most emblematic things that you can do if you come to Venice is getting on a gondola. See? How cool. So of course while I'm on here I have to tell you a bit about the history of the gondola because why not? So the origins of the gondola are actually lost to history but they worked as water taxis sometime around the 1500s. They would bring people from one street end to another, but eventually gondoliers kind of got a bad rap. Um, and so people with a lot of money would hire their own private gondoliers and their own private gondolas to bring them from one edge of the river to another. And they would pimp out their rides and paint them blue, purple, yellow, different colors and different ornamentation like that one. Um, until in 1516, the church decided to pass a law saying that you could no longer pimp out your gondolas, stating that all the gondolas had to be painted black to avoid the sign of vanity. So yeah, that's why all gondolas today are painted black, which is kind of pretty fun. Okay, I've literally taken this like video like three times, but I just can't decide what's my favorite background because now we're going into like, kind of a less occupied bridge, but look how cool, look, look. And you really get like a different view from the city, like from once you're in the water to when you're like walking up the bridges and stuff. It's kind of incredible. So it's, it's definitely worth it. You have to come right on one of these. This is epic. Oh my god. Okay, so we got really lucky. This is Emmanuel. He's our gondolier. And he, gondoliers here have their past passed down from generation to generation. That means that his dad was a gondolier, and that his grandfather was a gondolier, and that his great grandfather was a gondolier. And he's one of the best, clearly, because also he keeps on cleaning up the water while we're going through the waterways, which is incredible. So yeah, I really do recommend him if you find him. Como describirías a Venecia? Yo, con una frase solamente amore. So I'm passing under the Bridge of Sighs, and it's called that because on one side we have the prison, and on the other side tenemos el Palacio de la Justicia. And so basically, as prisoners would pass the Bridge of Sighs, they would sigh one last time because they knew what awaited them. Okay, and so prisoners would pass through this bridge and sigh because they knew their imminent fate of what was to come, their imprisonment, or even death. Okay, so I just cannot... Oh my god, look how great this is. So Venice is known as the city of water. Water is the lifeblood of this beautiful floating city. And I'll go into why in a second. <laughs> Gotta enjoy this. During the Roman Empire, the people who lived in these lagoons and these marshes were mere fishermen. But around the 5th century, the barbarians, the Lombards, the Ostrogoths, they invaded Rome. And so the citizens of the Roman Empire fled to these marshes seeking refuge. So technically, the city of Venice is founded by refugees. So as the city of Venice started to get more and more refugees, it needed to expand. And so how was this famous floating city built? Well, it was built on wood. So these poles would be stuck deep into the ground, into the ocean, and on top were wooden planks. And on top of that is where people ended up building their residences. So the city of Venice is literally floating on water and wood. 
The reason why Venice has lasted as long as it has is because the wooden planks and the wooden poles that were buried deep within, the salt water and the salt within the water mixed with the wood and hardened the structure. And that's how Venice remains until today, though slowly it is sinking because of global warming. So it's kind of upsetting, but look how pretty it is for now. Okay, I'm just gonna set you here for now. This is the fun part of the video part with nobody to film. So, the Republic of Venice. During the Republic of Venice, sex work was actually really common. Approximately 10,000 ladies of the night could be found in these streets. This was the red light district. And right now where I'm currently located, it's called Ponte Teta. So the story goes that women would conglomerate on the balconies of these houses and they would show their breasts. And it was encouraged because the social authorities thought that that would somehow make gay men straight again. So yeah, that's how this lovely bridge got its name. <laughs> And story goes that supposedly at night, these women with their full-blown breasts would stand with lanterns, just kind of waiting for their next victims. So with that ends the video of Venice. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you do, leave a like, comment what you liked. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, I hope you have a marvelous day. Bye.